Now I want to open my image in Photoshop and create the embossing mask. So I'll do that now. Open up the image. Spider-Man CMYK. The look I want to create is for the web of Spider-Man suit to be a solid emboss, the blue trousers to be a coarse texture, the orange top to be a fine grain and his reflection in the glass to be finer still. Finally I want his eyes to have a graduated texture. I will start with the web. I will use the pen tool to clip out all the elements of the web. This takes a little time but eventually all these elements will be clipped. So now if I just complete this last one it's not essential to be 100% accurate all we're doing is making a mask ready for the emboss so it's not affecting the CMYK element. Okay that's finished that so if I now zoom out you can see that all of the elements of the job which I intend to have full embossed have been clipped out. For the next part of the job I would like an additional layer so what I will do is duplicate the base layer and it's this layer I'm going to now add the full embossed to. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to parts and make my work path into a selection. Once I've done that I can then edit out all of the elements contained within this selection and what I will do is simply press delete and that will remove it from this background copy. If I just verify that, if I take off the background you'll see that all of the elements clipped out are now transparent which is why you can see them if you do that. What I think I'll do next I'll simply click inverse and I'll again delete and now what I have is on this particular background copy layer I only have the elements which are to be full embossed. If I click inverse again I can now color these using my color tool. If I just clip on any one of them I'll be able to colour all of those in black. What I want to do now is turn off the background copy for a minute and actually work instead on the background. The next part of the job is to work on the trousers. So I'm going to clip around the trousers. So now that the clipping path is complete I'm going to go to paths and I'm going to save that path as trousers. Save that. I'm also going to copy that path and you'll see why a little bit later. The next job is to open a completely new document and make this exactly the same size as the existing document. So that's 216 millimeters by 303 at 400 pixels per inch. So there is my new document. If I press select all, I can color that. If I press delete, I can color it with the background color. And I've set the background color to be a 30% tint of black. So let's pull that in. What I'm now going to do is go to mode, bitmap, and using the diffusion dither at 200 pixels per inch, because I want this to be a coarse screen for the trousers, I'm going to change this to a bitmap always remember to deselect the selection before you try that. So what I've created now, if I fit it in the screen, is that very thing, a diffusion dither 200 pixels per inch of the 30% tint. So let's fit that in the screen. Always remember, this is very important, to go back into image size and make that back, whatever resolution you've had, make it back into the resolution of the original document. 
it on screen again. So if I now go to paste, I can paste on the two elements of the trousers. And if I go to make selection, I can now cut those elements ready to put back into my original document. Let's have a look and let's quickly paste those in and position them exactly where the trousers are. Like that. Perhaps zoom in to check your positioning. This is in another layer which I can, if I want to, call trousers. If I now zoom back out again, I'm now going to work on the top of the suit. So if I start clipping around here, So now that that work path is completed, I will save it as top. I will now go back to my bitmap image and this time I'll change it back into a grayscale. I'll delete off that 30%, I don't need it. And actually I'll change this to 25%. If I delete again, that will then be 25% tint. Now I wanted a bit finer screen this time so if I go to the bitmap instead of 200 I will make this 300 pixels per inch and this time again remember to go back to 400 dpi here. I can now paste my clipped image and again make this into a selection. I can then copy that out, go back to my original design and paste it. And that sits now in position. Let's check that positioning is right. Okay, I think I'll save this for now. Save as a Photoshop document with all the layers. So if I go back to my layers and view my layers, I think I will call this new layer here top. Second to last part is to highlight all of the area which is the reflection in the mirror. So again I'll switch this one off, go back to the background and start a new work path and start clipping around. And so now that this work path is finished I'll go back into parts, I'll change that work path to be called reflection and again I will copy now back to the bitmap and here if I change this into grayscale mode select all go here and change this to 15% press delete to bring in the background color I now can go to my mode bitmap and this time I'm going to go with the very fine screen so I'll leave it at 400 pixels per inch and change. I can now paste in my clipping path and again make this into a selection and copy out, go back to the original image paste it in and then accurately position it where that shadow should go. I will now go back to my layers 
and I'll name that layer reflection. And for now, I'll turn that layer off as well. So the final part of the job is to cut out the eyes. What I'm going to do here is go to parts. I'll make a new part and I will cut out just the inner portion of the eye. And the reason this needs special treatment is because I've decided that I'm going to have a graduated fill to accentuate the reflection on the eye. So once I've clipped that out, I can then again copy that and I'm ready to go back to my bitmap. This time I'll go back to grayscale. I'll select all again and delete. But this time I'm going to have a graduated fill. So I will select my gradient fill button, select gradient tool, select circular and choose my tints for each end of the gradient. So I think I will go to 50% at one end, right down to just 5% at the other. I have to remember the eye is very small so I shall zoom in to paint on a smaller canvas. I'll now use my gradient tool and pull a gradient. So if I just go and view that in the screen, I can now change that to bitmap. I'll keep the 400 pixels per inch. And if I now paste my clipping path, I can then decide whereabouts I would like this gradient fill to be. And what I'd like is for the gradient fill to extend from the bottom corner and actually be heavier in the bottom corner and lighter where the sun is shining in the top left hand corner. That should be fine. So I'll now go to make selection. I can now copy that and put it back into my original document. I'll now do the same on the other eye. With the eyes finished, all the elements of the embossing are complete. It just remains to make sure that the layers are correct. To start with, the reflection layer should be set to the reverse. The next layer is the top, which we make sure comes over the top of the reflection. We then add on the trousers. We then must make sure that the eyes are brought to the front. And finally, background copy, which is all of the solid emboss elements, needs to be brought to the very front. And there is the finished Spider-Man emboss. If we take off the background you can see what the emboss element looks like. Before any, we go any further it's very very important to make sure you save the Photoshop document in case at any time you need to make amendments. With the Photoshop document safely saved we can now flatten the image and discard the hidden layer which is the background. We now have one layer being all the embossed elements. It's also important to make this into a grayscale image because we don't want to carry any color information. We can now then save as a JPEG and we will save it as emboss.